Hello everyone, thank you for joining me here tonight. Uh, tonight we are going to be working on the Adventure Abounds block for the Splendid Sampler 2. This is foundation paper piecing. So thanks so much for joining me here tonight. This is a live on Facebook and if you're watching on YouTube then you're watching the replay so thanks for joining me there as well. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time that we can relax and craft uh, for about an hour live. And uh, we work on projects from beginning to end. So you can be part of the whole process along the way. And we have been working through the Splendid Sampler 2. So this is uh, 100 different quilt blocks. And they are all by different designers. They use different techniques. And tonight we are going to start the Adventure Abounds block. This is foundation paper piecing. So this technique allows you to get some crazy intricate work. Like look at that tree. Uh, and it looks like you have pieced all of these tiny little triangles and not even perfect shapes like trapezoids and all that. It looks like you are a master a quilt piecer and can just cut out the little shapes and have them sewn together perfectly. It is actually done through a technique called foundation paper piecing where you print out these intricate designs on paper and then we sew to each one of these. It may look a little crazy there now but we will go through the whole process uh, this week. So thank you guys for joining me here. It's nice to see everyone. All right, new block tonight. So uh, we're, we actually do have uh, the other block <laughs> to finish yet. So we still have this guy. So there's just a couple of French knots left. So towards the end, we will work on that in, in, as well. So we are gonna be doing the prep work for this piece tonight and then tomorrow we'll get sewing. So, all right, I'm gonna flip you around and we'll get started. So hello, hello everyone. Good to see you all popping in. Uh, thank you again for joining me here tonight. All right, let's get this, sorry, this camera thing going there a little bit. All right, here we are. So tonight is the second week of the month. And for the second week, we are working through the Splendid Sampler. We split up this year, uh, this, this year's projects by weeks. So this week, we're back on the Splendid Sampler. Okay, Adventure Abounds is by Kitty Wilkin, and it is this adorable little like pine tree with a little heart, some, some water, some mountains or, or water. I think it's water. Um, all right, and uh, from the back of the book, you have the templates. Uh, this is on Template uh, pattern sheet number three. Actually, let's see. It's if you open it up. So this comes with the book. It is. Oh yeah, pattern pattern sheet four. So if you go all the way to the bottom, it is this section here. It says Adventure Abounds, page one uh, one twenty two. So I've just made a photocopy of that. Oh, Gloria, so happy you're here too. Hello, Pat. Hello, Gabe. Thank you guys for, for joining me. Okay, so I've printed out, I've photocopied one of those. I actually photocopied another one, but I think I actually only need one. So I'm going to use this one as a bookmark. Um, but our first step tonight is we are going to try and decipher these patterns and uh, and color code it. So I always like to start my foundation paper piecing projects like this. So I have my colored pencils out here tonight. Uh, I want to pick some colors for these from from my fabric bin, and then we will color code our our pieces here. We'll look at them and try and decipher where they fit within here, and we will color code them so we don't get confused later. I find that this is one of the most important things to do uh, with foundation paper piecing so you don't get completely confused later. So all right, to start out, let's pick our fabrics. Now right away, there's a lot of white 
And one of my rules for the particular quilt that I am sewing is wherever there's a background, I want it to be white. So luckily this is almost, uh, we're getting that effect already. So I'm going to just grab some white. Then the other kind of rule I set for my quilt is I'm trying to do uh, some low contrast, like there's no bright brights and dark darks or light lights and dark darks. It's just kind of a lot of light colors. So I need to uh, find in here pieces that would be good for all of these. So I'm not using green, I'm not using blue or red. I gotta find colors out of just these kind of creams to make it work. So right away, this star is kind of popping out at me. This might actually be fun for the little heart because that's, that's pretty striking on white, I think. So that's, that's kind of what I'm feeling like right away. I kind of like laying out my fabrics so they're kind of in the same proportion as the picture. It helps me just like look through and pick fabrics. So let's, let's pretend that this is the white. Let's pretend that this is our little heart up on the corner there. We have a variety of blues. I'm not sure they really need to be a variety. And we have a couple of variety of greens, but why not? It, it'd be cute if they were different, I suppose. So let's, let's look at this tree. Maybe we, we have some like yellow type things. Maybe we veer towards the yellow side of things for the tree. That's such a bright yellow. Maybe we go more, Oh, I always, I, I still like this, this batik here, uh, but I'm, I'm liking this yellow. What if we did, you know, we could do the whole thing with this yellow too. That would be kind of cute. I think maybe this is going to be part of my ground. Then it, it won't necessarily be water. It's kind of got these little flowers and that's kind of cute. This is always like the question mark. Like what do I do for stuff? I don't ever know. But we're figuring it out as we go. Maybe these two would be a little cuter for the tree. That's a little bit more delicate. I kind of like that these are so close to each other. Like these, this is like a, a, you know, a solid green and then a textured green. This is kind of like a solid orange and a textured orange. That's, that's maybe a little bit sweeter, don't you think? All right, maybe I like that. That guy could be the heart. Let's, let's try and make quick decisions here. So, uh, all right, so we kind of have like an orangey bit here. So maybe we go with more of these tans for this ground. So let's just pick, let's just pick four tans that are pretty similar. So one, two, three, four. There. I think like that, I think we're fine. How about that? It's already shaping up, good picks. All right, I like those comments. Uh, you know, again, I've picked all my fabrics before we started this project, so I know no matter what, as a whole quilt, it's going to go to go together okay. So whatever I pick, it's not going to be the end of the world. It's all going to go together. So I kind of like this, that these feel different than the rest. That's going to make our tree pop. And I do kind of like these little stars. I think that's, that's kind of sweet. So let's, let's keep that for the heart. And then these are some just some nice tan textures that feel a little bit different. I think we got our, our game plan here. So I'm going to just put the rest of these away. I mean, flowers and stuff would be cute, but I kind of like that it's more subdued and our focus is on this kind of orangey color. So, all right, let's be done. I'm going to plop all these. We are getting kind of low on fabric here, but that's what happens when you're a ways through a quilt, I suppose. Okay. So, now I am going to kind of, uh, let's, let's decipher this and I'm going to come up with a color code for each of these, which may be a little different color because we do have quite a few things, but maybe I can take, uh, where there's really, it looks like there's only one piece of each of these. So maybe we can just figure out a little bit of a code. All right. So this is, you can see these are our, uh, pieces that will be using as our foundation, you know, so it's adventure bounds A, adventure bounds B, C, D, E, F. So we'll be sewing each of these sections separately. You can kind of see 
just a little image of how these are actually going to work. We have all our little sections, and you can see that, um, you know, section B here, it looks crazy alone, but once you get that little green in and add it to these other sections, all of a sudden it looks like a tree. Um, so that's, that's uh, what we need to kind of decipher here. So for example, this A, if you look right here, it looks like this center area may be our heart. It looks just like that there. Uh, one thing to know is that these will actually be flipped in reverse. So like here, here is that bottom piece, but look, our triangles are kind of going up this way. Here, the little one, the little slanty one is here and they're going up the other way. Uh, that's because this whole thing will be flipped. So we'll be sewing on this side and then this side will be what looks correct here. Okay. And so again, here's a little code of what we're at. So F would be here. That's our bottom shapes. Uh, A is our heart area. And then B, C, D, and E. B, C, D, and E is our um, tree. And you know what? I'm, I'm seeing that I'm actually missing, missing a piece here. Um, you know what? Why don't we use, we'll use the star piece for for that little tree stump too. Uh, I missed that part, the, the stump of the tree. So let's just let's just add do the stars. So the stars will be the heart and that little piece. I think that'll be cute. Alright, so color coding. Again, I find this the most helpful thing to do for paper piecing. So right off the bat, I am gonna decide that I'm not going to color in the white. So any anytime there's a white piece here, I'm going to just leave that white here. So I'm going to start with this um, this heart just because I know it's right here. I think that will uh, do well. So let's let's kind of pick a color scheme here. So I'm going to pick kind of colors that look like the colors I have. So I'm going to have this color be these two colors. Uh, one I'm going to fill in solid and one, this one kind of has flowers, so I'll draw like little flowers on. Uh, the stars, let's just make it this, whatever this is, this fun copper. <laughs> I'll just draw, draw stars. And then all these kind of tans, I'm going to do the same color for them all. Let's just pick like a gray out of here. There we go. So this is kind of like a you know, whatever, a gray, it's kind of close to these. And I'll just kind of draw these shapes. Like we got like little pine tree things. We got a little plaid, I'll draw a plaid. We got some squiggles and we got some big circles. So I think that's how we're gonna do that. And actually let's just do that first. So let's just go in order. Um, I think I'm gonna do like the reverse order here. So let's have this F8, that's this big one here. I'm gonna just kind of lightly fill it in with this gray. So I changed my mind, I'm doing this bottom first. So I'm filling it in with gray and then it's the big circles. So I'm just gonna draw kind of like big circles there. <laughs> so this is my reminder that this is indeed a colored piece of fabric and it is this circly one. All right, so the next one I wanna do is the, the squiggles. That will be this guy. So again, I'm just gonna fill in this shape and then let's just draw some squiggles. <laughs> some crazy squiggles. All right, that should, that should get the idea across to me. Big circles, squiggles. All right, now this one will be the plaid. So let's just draw, there, that's, that's my plaid. And uh, then we got this little tan one. This one has kind of like little pine cone shapes on. So let's color this in and I'm gonna just draw like a, like a pine cone with a circle. So that's, that's kind of what's going on here. So a little pine cone with a circle, that's kind of what we got subtly going on here. So there we go, already, I'm gonna color this a, a little bit more so you can see the gray. But already, just by coloring these in, like compare it to this one that I haven't colored in. I mean, immediately we know, okay, 
color, 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 and you can see the shapes of those triangles. Whereas here, you kind of have to decipher them a little bit. Uh, it's a, just a little bit of a slower read. This is a quick read to go know exactly what goes where. That's going to be so conveniently convenient later because you know we're going to be seeing that piece like this and like this, and you know if I saw this piece like this, I might confuse that those are what are supposed to be the color shapes. So by coloring it in beforehand, I find that just so helpful. And then all these are going to stay white because that those are white shapes right there. Okay. Oh, good. Jennifer wasn't sure if she finished it, and uh, she did. <laughs> oh, yes. So Charlotte says, wow, the colors really do make a difference. Yes, I cannot recommend this part of the process enough. Yes, it takes a bunch of time. We're not sewing yet, but it's so nice. So you'll especially see here. Okay, so I'm going to do the, the heart now, and I'm going to just kind of use this pencil. And this is the only time I'm using this, so I really don't need to draw stars on, but I'm going to draw stars on anyway. So we can, again, get a little hint from down here, uh, but you can kind of see here is where that heart comes through. So I'm going to just color in these two shapes. And again, immediately you are going to see that heart where it was probably pretty hidden before. All right, and I'm going to draw out little stars as my little reminder that this is star fabric. There we go, like right away. You get that, okay, that stars, everything else is white. Um, so that's what we're going for there. Last up, oh, nope, we got one more little piece that we're going to use the stars for, and that's this, this E1 piece. That is that little, that little tree stump stem. All right, I'm going to remind myself that it's a star. All right, there we go. And lastly, we have these little tree bits. And now if we look at the design here, it looks like it's solid and then pattern, solid, pattern, solid. And we do kind of have a solid and a pattern. So I'm going to draw, I'm just going to color it in completely for the solid. And I will color it in and then put a little like flower on here for, um, for the flower one. Oh, Amy, just keep going. You are to only have 12 blocks to go on the Splendid Sampler one. That is freaking a huge, huge accomplishment <laughs> for sure. That took me years to finish, so don't worry. All right, so now this is, um, this one, it's a little, I mean, there's a lot going on here, but if we look really carefully, you know, this is that first piece and it is flipped. So we can kind of decipher that this, this one that says B1 and this says B5, it looks like these two are our little pieces here. And the top one is solid and the next one is the pattern. So let's, let's fill it in. I mean, this one I feel like I would get con totally confused on if I wouldn't color it in beforehand. All right, so this one I'm gonna just do a little bit lighter and we'll draw a flower there. So that's, that's how I know that this is solid. This is the pattern with the flowers. Okay, uh, next up we have the C1 piece here. It looks like they've stacked these in order, so that's really, really helpful. Um, this one is the solid. So let's just color, color that guy in. All right, and then we have, it's, it's this triangle here and this triangle. So the triangle is to the left here and it's to the right here, but remember, this is the reverse. So when we flip it around, it'll be in the right position. So this one is the pattern and this little dude is, is the solid. So let's, let's do that solid guy. Okay, and then this one is our pattern. So I'm gonna draw like little flowers. Um, that as my reminder. Okay, but already look, we can kind of see the whole design coming through. You know, here we have our little tree pieces. Here's a little stump, our heart, and all our little like kind of oceany waves here. So right away, I mean, look at look at this piece versus the not colored piece. I mean, this is so confusing, I feel like. There, you don't know where anything is. Like, this tree is invisible right here. But here, all of a sudden, it is popping out for us. So 
I recommend, totally, totally, totally recommend coloring it in first. So, all right. Uh, we are ready to uh, keep going with this. So this is the major part of the prep. Um, next up, and this is, you definitely want to color it before you cut it out, because the moment you cut it out, these pieces are going to be rotating and falling everywhere, and it'll be hard to keep track of it. So uh, they have added a little bit of, we have our uh, quarter of an inch border around there, so feel free to cut on those lines. A lot of times for paper piecing, you may see patterns that don't have this border, and it may actually have like this B section butted up right against the C section. And you actually have to go in and look, find all the C's, and then cut them away from, from the B's. So um, it could be a little bit more difficult. I'm going to show you quick what that might look like. This pattern, they have it all separated for us. But, like I said, not all foundation paper piecing patterns are like that. So you may, you may get, find yourself working on a project that's foundation paper piecing that looks more like this. It looks more like one nice finished piece all together. And there, let's yeah, try and hold it there. So you might have one big piece. So you won't have little divided up pieces like this. And then you have to go in and find, oh, these are all Bs and this is a C. Okay, so those are two separate areas. Let's cut them apart separately. And they might not even be perfect rectangles. They could be weird, odd shapes. But you might have to go in and find all those bits. In our case, they have separated them, all the letters for us already. So we don't have to do that work, which is, which is super nice. So, all right, I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to cut it out with the with the uh, quarter inch mark. That is just kind of a reminder, because remember, if you are working on a piece and they're all together like this, you'll have to remember to add your own quarter inch, because it won't, it won't be showing uh, if, you, if you have to cut out all the pieces from one big project. And I know some foundation paper piecing projects are, are like that. Again, they're giving it to us, uh, for us. You know, you notice I'm not cutting perfectly on there. This does not have to be perfect because ultimately we are going to use our ruler uh, once we have fabric on here and we're going to cut this super perfect. So just to cut this out, all we need to know is that's roughly the quarter, quarter inch. So I don't think we're going to start sewing tonight. Uh, we actually might have a little bit of a sl of a early night tonight because uh, I do want to do the French knots in that other piece so we can finish, finish that. Uh, and I'm trying to get my sewing machine to work. I put new bobbin thread in and I think I might have put the bobbin thread in wrong. I'm still trying to learn my, my steampunk machine sewing sewing machine so I think I gotta change that out but by tomorrow I will have the machine up and running and we will be paper piecing and I'm using a machine from the 1940s so you do not need a fancy new machine to do foundation paper piecing so don't worry don't worry about that I do like getting all these pieces prepped and then have them ready to go for the next day. I think this is actually going to go really quickly. Um, we might not quite get it done this week, but um, we'll for sure get it done uh, the next week that we work on this next month. This is a nice, fun foundation paper piecing product. I can, I can tell. Correct, Kathy. So all my non-colored boxes, that is going to be the white background. So I didn't bother coloring those in. I mean, if you were doing like a purple background, feel free to 
color them all in purple, um, that's totally fine. I am actually using a white back, so it makes sense uh, to just have, have the white. Um, yeah, I mean, if you were doing a white tree with a purple background, I would maybe make the tree white and then like color in that purple. That would be actually really pretty. It'd be like a nice little winter scene. All right, so already, how confusing is this if they're all different shapes? I mean, if this was, or different, you know, once we drop them and they're not all upright, how would you ever know that, you know, this is what gets colored in? It'd be, it'd be confusing fast, but because we colored it in, like I immediately know, you know, even that that's a pattern and that's a solid. So this is, it's just the best to um, get it all together uh, like this. So now I have my stack ready to go. Uh, and uh, that's probably all we're going to do on this piece tonight. Uh, some things that we are going to want tomorrow, so if you uh, want to gather them for tomorrow, is you are going to want, uh, I like doing it this way, so you are going to want a little postcard. Uh, you can use like a manila folder or something, but what we're looking for is a thin kind of stiff paper. So. Yeah, like a folder, um, you know, a little card from a magazine, something like that. I'm just using one of our postcards. So if you if you probably have a post, one of our postcards if you've ordered something from us before. But this is a nice, we want this nice, thin, straight edge. Uh, so another thing that we're going to want is some glue. Uh, I'm just going to use a little glue stick. So we this is just some archival temporary glue stick that I've had for ages, um, rubs on purple, dries clear, uh, washable, you're going to want like a non-toxic washable uh, glue stick. This is just like your school uh, school glue, uh, like your Elmer's or something. So you're going to want a little bit of that. Uh, the other thing I'm going to use, well, okay, so you still want, you still want your like rotary cutter and your, your mat. Uh, you're going to want those to play around with, and, uh, um, and a ruler. I'm going to actually add one of my favorite things to the list as well. This is my add-a-quarter ruler. So, oh, there you can see. It's called an add-a-quarter. Uh, what this is, is it's a ruler that has a little quarter-inch bump out. So it's a little lower here, and this, this right here measures a quarter of an inch. That is going to help us... Uh, cut later and it, it really is a magic tool. Uh, it's not necessary. You can use a normal uh, ruler. So I'm going to have that around too. You can use a normal just uh, ruler like this and measure the quarter inch. But I'm telling you, if you do a lot of paper piecing, which you will if you're doing the splendid sampler, it seems so silly, but this helps you measure a quarter of an inch so much faster than laying this on. It just sounds dumb, right? Like, why do I need something to measure a quarter of an inch? Clearly, I can measure a quarter of an inch. But you will be surprised at how helpful and easy um, this, will, this will make things. So Gretchen says that hers has a tapered edge. So yes, so they have made a new add a quarter ruler. Gosh, I think it's called like the add a quarter plus or something. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not positive. But it has, the new ones have the, the bump, the quarter inch bump on one side, and then it has a taper on this side. So actually, if you have that one with the taper, you don't need the postcard with that thin edge. They've kind of adapted their ruler to do the same thing. I, I still like using this. I have not tried the new one. Uh, but anyway, if you are doing paper piecing, you know, this is a couple bucks. I totally recommend it. Um, and you'll see why tomorrow when we get started. So, all right. So have those tools ready. At minimum, uh, a little glue stick and a, a ruler and, you know, your cutting mats and rotary cutter. You can even do this with the scissors if you really want to. Uh, but your normal kind of quilting tools and a glue stick, that will, that will do the job. But I recommend having the postcard and for bonus points that add a quarter ruler. So, okay, so I think we are gonna stop this one for tonight. This is a great start. Oh, I should be able to pick this up at any time and know exactly what goes where if I keep the fabrics with it. 
Let's just stack them all up. So I am all ready for tomorrow. You may want to clip these together when you're not using them. Oh, and I don't have um, my Wonder Clips near me. I still have them packed up from being gone, but uh, just, you know, get some, get a, a binder clip or a Wonder Clip or a paper clip or something and hold these together. All right, so before we get too far on this project, I want to finish these, um, this, this guy here. So this is, let's just jump back. This is the stitch and pause block. And uh, uh, we got cut off last time when we were finishing it. All I have to do is, you know, there's three French knots here. I just got to put three French knots in all the rest of these flowers. And then, then we can call this guy done. This one took months and months and months uh, to do. <laughs> And it, it's time for us to finish it. So, all right, I'm going to get my, my two strands out. I cannot leave this as an unfinished block. <laughs> oh, thanks, Kathy. Uh, Kathy's saying that the koala quilt is superb. So uh, that's where, if you guys weren't here yesterday, that's where I was uh, last week. The end of last week is I was at my my parents house and my mom and I uh, sewed together the whole koala quilt so we made the entire koala quilt from all of your guys's um, beautiful koalas that you made that you stitched up for our fundraiser and this is the koala fundraiser auction quilt and all that's left is to finish stitching on the binding which is crazy I can't believe uh, we did we um we finished all that <laughs> oh yeah it's kind of like a bonus finish on tuesday <laughs> exactly Nora. Uh, i have to get this done all right so i'm going to weave in the ends here uh we're doing this without without um an embroidery hoop um so the stitches that were used for this are stitches that work really well without an embroidery hoop um, but typically I do like using an embroidery hoop, but man, yep, I cannot leave this guy unfinished. It took us months and months and months and months to get, get this far on him. Oh, Denise, you like the pincushion? So yep, this is Zeb. It's by uh, Deborah from Fish Museum and Circus, uh, so if you'll free to like look that up. Uh, she's on Etsy. Oh, I think she has her own website now, Fish Museum and Circus, but oh, I love him so much. <laughs> and we named him Zeb because he's got stripes like a little zebra, but oh, he's the cutest. So he, he holds all my, my needles. All right, let's get these French knots going. Okay, so each one of these gets three. And I kind of drew them in, but I'm not really going by them. I'm just kind of uh, getting them so three fit in this little area. I want to quickly get these done. Oh, you've been doing the 12 um, splendid sampler blocks for years and years. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. That's that's uh, how I'm feeling <laughs> too. Uh, so I I don't think I'm quite halfway through with the second splendid sampler. I did finish the first one, um, but uh, I think this is my 49th, or not this one, but the one that we just started, the Adventures Abound. I think that's my 49th block. Ooh, I'm gonna get a cross off this block tonight too. That will that will be, feel good. I'll do that with you guys. Oh, uh, Gretchen says the needles you sent with the hoop and needle bundle are the best. Oh, that's great. I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah, the the eye the eye that we have on our embroidery needles is extra big, so it makes it um, super easy to thread. You can thread all sorts of stuff through there, and it, and it still has the sharp point. 
a lot of times those bigger needles, they don't have the sharp point because they're used for cross stitch and, and for cross stitch you don't, you want a blunt point on your needle. So they don't, so like when you're using that Ada fabric with the holes in, you're not piercing the threads around those holes. You want to just the blunt end to go through. But with embroidery, you do want to pierce the fabric. Oh, good. I'm glad. I'm glad it's uh, working for you. Yeah, they're freaking great for embroidery for sure. So uh, that is a question I've been getting a lot lately, Kathy. Can we just get the needles? And uh, I am going to put a listing up soon. I'm trying to find the right packaging. I'm going to list, uh, I'm going to put up a pack of 12. Um, they're a little, just because of shipping and everything, it's a little weird to just have like a couple. That's why we have them bundled with a hoop. Um, but with a pack of 12, I think we can, we can do it right. Um, right now you can get, um, you can get a pack of two needles with a hoop, with an eight inch embroidery hoop. I do have that available on the website now in the supplies. And it's on our embroidery of the month. I'm just jumping over here to the, the next area. Um, but I will have the needles, like a pack of 12 needles available um, by themselves as soon as I can figure out packaging for them. So hopefully within a month, or so, hopefully sooner, but um, we'll see. I don't want needles flying out in your package everywhere. <laughs> you would like the needles alone, Catherine? Okay, so good. So that's that's good to hear. Uh, my mom said that she wanted some alone too. Uh, so uh, I will, um, I'm going to work on getting that together for you guys. My mom also suggested maybe, oh, there's a name for these, but like one of those little kind of like bamboo tubes with the little mini cap. Uh, I think that something like that might be perfect for, uh, for the needles and then you can store them in too. So I'm going to, I'm going to look around for, for some of those. Oh, only two flowers left. We're getting there. Quilting needles, oh, quilting needles with a big eye would be great. Yeah, so some thinner needles with a big eye. I agree, that would be really kind of nice. I'll have to look for that. Oh, straw needles for a needle turn. Yeah, maybe I'll um, try and find um, some places to get those things from Sue. So we just, we, uh, ha we get our um, needles specially manufactured, uh, these embroidery needles, um, but so I don't, I only have the embroidery needles for our stuff. I don't have the straw needles or anything else, but I'll find a vendor and, and order some, some of those as well. Cause yeah, I love having those straw needles available and the smaller quilting needles. Yeah. And I am, this is great. So if there are any other supplies that you guys want, let me know. I was even thinking of, um, you know, those scissors that I love, the Kai, the Kai scissors, like it'd be awesome to have like these in the shop too. Um, I, I am trying to get more supplies in the shop so you guys have, you know, whatever you need. So uh, if there's anything else that you want, let me know and I will, I will dig into it and see if we can get them. Because it's, it's just nice having everything in one spot for sure. Is a, a container like that? Oh, that you can use a Sharpie to label. Oh, that'd be cute. Yeah. Oh, needle threaders. Oh, that's a good idea. Yes to the scissors. Yeah, I want to carry more scissors. So I can add to my giant scissors collection that clearly must be labeled a collection now at this point. Yeah, I don't want to go crazy. Yes, okay, I have a good idea for the fuzzle t-shirt, Bonnie. I, I do, I, I have an idea for that. So I just need to sit down and design it. And then I, I think I have a place where I can do some t-shirts too. So 
t-shirts and sweatshirts and stuff uh, will be coming. I just need a, a free weekend <laughs> to look at going on, on those. But all right, those are my last, uh, last French knots. So I'm gonna weave in the ends here and I'm calling this guy officially done. Um, I didn't take the the um, blue water soluble marker off, but I could show you guys how to do that quick. I can get a rag and um, show you how I like to take take the um, blue off. We do have some time yet here, so let me uh, let me grab. Oh, this is silly scissors to be using here. Let's. That's just dumb. That doesn't cut anything. Oh, there's my other scissors. Oh man, all my stork scissors have run off. Okay, I have this little one yet. There we go. <laughs> okay. Oh, Denise, I am attempting to make this whole thing. So this is, I believe, my 48th one. Uh, the one that we started today will be my 49th block. So if you are looking to make any of these, I have videos for every one that I've done from beginning to end up on Penguin and Fish Movies on YouTube. So you can just search for the block if you want. Um, I am going to do all of them. Uh, I'm doing them the second week of every month. <laughs> and that is this week. And we're going to just work on them until we finish them. So we're going to just tick them off little by little by little by little by little. <laughs> all right. I'm going to grab a, a rag quick. So I just like getting with just like a little towel here. I'm gonna go wet this, so give me two seconds here. Okay, so I do like to get this nice and a sopping wet. And usually I'd maybe do this on a towel as well, but I'll just take that sopping wet towel and start to dab on that blue. And you can see it's already, it's already coming right off. So like, let's look at, let's, oops, sorry. Let's look at this area here. You can see all that blue. I'm gonna just dab. And I think the wetter, the wetter the better. If you don't get wet enough, then it'll just kind of, the blue will just bleed a little bit. Uh, I like to, make it nice and wet so it all goes away. I mean, your block's gonna get all wet, but that'll that'll dry, but look, all of that blue is totally gone, and look how pretty it's looking. So I might have to get this wet again, but let's just see if I can get the rest of it um, with what I got going on here. Yeah, I think a little bit more water, but let's just see if I can push really hard. Is your schedule posted? Oh, so um, it's not posted anywhere. Maybe I should I should do a post. So the schedule, I'll let you know the schedule right now, though, but I, I should do an actual post about it. Um, week one, the first full week of each month, I work on the Granny Squares quilt. The Granny Square, um, yeah, the square, Granny Square blocks. Uh, the second full week of the month, we uh, work on the Splendid Sampler. The third week of the month, we uh, stitch up my um, embroidery of the month, whatever the embroidery of the month is. This month, it is the Bumblebee. And I have links for all of these. So actually, I do have the schedule kind of posted. It's it's um, in this link below, uh, or the, the link, the uh, text within this post. But I guess I don't have dates on next to it. I should put the dates next to it. And then the last full week of the month, we work on the Aurafil uh, Designer of the Month quilt along. And my I'm actually one of the designers for that. So my block will be in, in July. All right. So there we go. All of that blue is off. And look how clean and, and pretty it looks. Um, if any of the blue comes back a little bit, just wet the, wet the rag a little bit more. Um, if I wanted to, I could, oh, see, you can see it a little bit on the back here yet. You could just add a little bit more water, but you know, 
this is, you're not going to see any of that anyway. Uh, but I'm going to just let this air dry. If you wanted to dry it out, you could press the black, uh, press the back a little bit. But uh, if you were wondering how to get that, um, if you were wondering how to get that blue pen off, that's how I like doing it. With what and why do you blot it? Oh, I am just using uh, just a white, just a kitchen towel, just like a, you can use any towel. And uh, um, you don't have to do it this way. You could like dip the whole thing in water. Um, I've heard people use a spray bottle sometimes. Um, I like the blotting because I can get a lot of water on there, but not so much water that I'm soaking the whole thing. Uh, I can just be more isolated and just squish a lot of water on. With the spray bottle, I feel like it just dots the blue and then the blue kind of spreads a little bit. Uh, and then you then you might see some of it still. So I just like blotting the whole thing. Sometimes I don't do anything. Um, for a lot of my blocks in this uh, Splendid Sampler, I have not I have not done this with it, but I know someone asked how to get it off um, uh, in an earlier session. So uh, I might just leave all the blue on and then throw it in the washing machine and have the washer take it all off. But I know some people don't like that. Sometimes it, I think it, it depends what laundry you do, detergent you have too. Sometimes it can maybe stain it. Um, so I find just the easiest and fastest thing is just to blot it a little bit. Yeah, it's so much nicer without the blue, isn't it? Awesome, you guys. So I am legit calling this guy done. All right, so let's go to the front. This is the stitch and pause block. Here is, here is my list here. Um, I think I have... Oh, I thought I had a um, highlighter over here. I guess it ran off. Let's see. I have a, I have a pencil though. I don't have my highlighter. So let's um, stitch and pause. I'll give it a highlight later, but there we go. That guy is dumbzo. <laughs> so let's just count how many. So Adventure Abounds, that's the one we're doing now. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Oh man, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, ah, so I still have 52, uh, 52 to do here. Um, it's not color coded, all, I just crossed off the ones that I have done. I was trying to code it for a little while, but now, now all I'm doing is highlighting them when they're completely done. So everything in white are ones that I, uh, ones that I have to do yet. <laughs> so 52 yet, so that means that that I'm only on the 58th one now, but another one crossed off. Awesome, you guys. So I'm gonna flip you guys around and we will call it an evening here. Hello. So I am happy to have another one, uh, another one done, you guys. And it really does look pretty, um, pretty sweet without the blue uh, marker. Oh yeah, if you guys are wondering, that the blue marker I'm using, I do have these in the shop now. So this is that water soluble blue marking pen. That's what uh, the blue pen was. And it's got like this really nice fine point to it. That's what I had originally marked that. And that's been on for like a year, <laughs> not a year, but several months. Uh, we've been working on this block for a long, long time. So it doesn't fade it, it doesn't just disappear like that. Um, like the purple disappearing um, type pencils it, it, or markers, it stays on there and it came off right away with uh, the dabs of water there. So woohoo, done. <laughs> so awesome, you guys. I will get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. I hope you uh, follow me here on Facebook and uh, subscribe over on uh, YouTube. Uh, I will... So on the YouTube, you can check out, I will, I will file this one both under this block and the adventures block. I'll start a new, new page for that, a new folder for that there. Um, if you wanted to check again, how we did earlier, that color coding of, 
of all our shapes there. Again, I think that is like the most the best thing you can do to prep for foundation paper piecing is get that colored in. It'll make your life so much easier later. So awesome. Thank you guys. We will start sewing on that uh, foundation paper piece block tomorrow. So have a great evening, everyone, and I'll see you then. Good night.